Hello folks, I am Odinspack33, and welcome to my brand new Let's Play. You already saw the title, it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is the infamously tough Ninja Turtles game for the NES, and I'm going to play through it for you today. Well, I mean, over the course of the next few days anyway. Uh, I'm starting this Let's Play to coincide with the new movie release, uh, only because I really want to do this game for a while, and I figured this was a good time to do it. So yeah, here's the intro playing now. It shows all the Ninja Turtles. shows the weapons that they use. If you've been paying attention there. Uh, I'm going to go over this game. Just kind of show you a bit, bit of tips and tricks. I'm going to show off as much of the levels as possible. Because there's a lot of levels in this game. You don't have to even play. But yeah. Also, I hope the new movie doesn't suck. I'm pretty sure I pointed this out like time and time again. But yeah. So here's the overworld. Uh, there's two parts to this game. Uh, a lot of people compare it to Zelda 2, actually, in terms of how it works, because, like, you got your overworld here. Uh, if you press start, you got a menu where it shows each of the four turtles. You can switch between them at any time, which is really convenient and really helpful in this game. Uh, there's Splinter giving you some advice. Uh, and then there's the map. All the white dots there are uh, basically areas you can enter to bring into the actual action stages, and then the red is, like, the path you can take, and everything else is off-limits. Let's go into this first level here, which you can technically skip, but uh, I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna try to show off as many of the levels as possible in the game. Uh, very simple, very simple platformer. I mean, there's not much to it. Uh, each of the different Ninja Turtles has a different weapon, and obviously I'll be showcasing all of them. Uh, Donatello is very good because of his range and damage. A lot of people prefer to use him over most of the other characters, but I think each of the characters actually have their own use, depending on where you are in the game. Uh, Donatello is not always the best option. Uh, Leonardo's great uh, because his weapon kind of hits downwards a bit when you swing it, as well as just in front of him, whereas Donatello's doesn't. Uh, but in essence, he kind of is just a weaker Donatello. Uh, this is a pizza. It gives you back two blocks of health. Uh, very useful, because in levels like this, if you were to go in and out of the stage, for instance, you could keep getting back the pizza, but we don't need to do that. But yeah, you can totally uh, skip this. If you get past that steamroller there, you don't have to even do that level. And there's foot soldiers on the map, and I really don't want to get run over by that guy, so we'll just do that. But yeah, you can kill guys on the map, too. Alright, so let's use Raphael. Uh, Raphael's my favorite Ninja Turtle. He uses the size. Uh, he's kind of garbage in this game, to be honest. Um, mainly because he has no range. Uh, so he's actually not as useful as the other turtles based on this game because the platformer and range is a very helpful thing in this game. Uh, however, uh, his size actually do slightly more damage than Leonardo and Michelangelo. Uh, but not as much as Donatello, and that's kind of hard to explain, but just some enemies uh, just take more damage uh, by Raphael than Leonardo or Michelangelo. It's, like I said, I'm not quite sure how it works, but yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, this is Bebop and Rocksteady. We're fighting Bebop right now. All he does is run at you. Uh, he can stop and and punch you, but he doesn't seem to be doing that, so I don't know how to make him do that. I guess you're not going to get to see it. I'm really trying there, but it just wasn't happening. Raphael's really cool when he swings his side, though. Like, it's so cool looking. <laughs> but yeah. So that's, Rafa or that's Raphael. He's my favorite. Uh, let's go in this useless house. Um, really, all that's in here is a full pizza, which is dumb, but I'm just going to show you off anyway. So I'm going to show you off Michelangelo, how he works different. Um, he's similar to Leonardo, but... Um, his up and down attacks are different. Like his forward is the same, it does the same damage, but if you attack up, he kind of has like this, kind of in front of him, like to the left there, doesn't actually go straight up. And when you hit down, it kind of has like, kind of the same as his straight forward, but he's just ducking really. He's very useful for hitting guys that are like underneath you, like there's a guy underneath you, he'd be good for this here. Also, I don't know a lot of the, like, the enemy names, like he's not very useful for this. I mean, you can hit this guy with Michelangelo. But it's kind of hard, right? As you're seeing, this is really difficult to do. Uh, but I'm going to make sure it happens. Uh, a good thing to note, like I said before, you can switch your turtles at any time. So you're like, this is kind of annoying. I think Leonardo will be better in this situation. You can just do that. It's also very helpful for not dying. 
Uh, Donatello can take out... He can do more damage, by the way, than every other Ninja Turtle. Uh, he can't seem to hit this guy, so I'm gonna get up here. But look, notice... I, I, maybe if I get a little closer, I can probably hit him, yeah. But if I were to use, like, Raphael or Michelangelo, I could just sat back here and hit him. This is important, like I said, important things to know. And you want to switch to Turtles and get pizza all the time. Now, you'll notice me pausing a ton in this game. So there's so much pausing, it's kind of ridiculous. I can't seem to hit him with this, but so I'll get Donatello out, get the bow staff. Because you, the kind of thing about this game is you just don't want to be hit by things. It's just kind of like a thing. Getting hit sucks. This guy's kind of stuck in a weird pattern, so there we go. But yeah, all that's in here is a full pizza, which gives back all your health. Um, some points in this game are definitely worth to grind for full pizzas because um, they're in convenient spots. That's like if you get hit, it's not a big deal because you're about to get all your health back. So yeah, but yeah, Michelangelo's good for hitting like guys like this. They wouldn't be able to hit like you might be able to hit this guy with Donatello farther away. All right, and this is our first sub weapon. I'm gonna give these to Donatello because he has the best weapon, so he doesn't really need a good sub weapon. Maybe I should give it to someone else, but. Anyway, uh, these are single shurikens. Uh, you can equip your shurikens. I just call them ninja stars because it's English and easier to pronounce. Um, there's two variants of these uh, ninja stars, though. These are single shots. If you throw them, they do. Oh yeah, all the bonus weapons uh, that you get do more damage or as much damage as Donatello's bow staff. Uh, but obviously, the big advantage is you can throw them. We're gonna use Donatello in the stage now, just kind of show him off a bit more. But yeah, you can throw these things. There's also a variant that uh, splits into three, which is way better, obviously. And then there is also boomerangs, and then a scroll weapon, um, which I always called cannons growing up because the icon kind of looks like a cannon. You'll you'll see. You'll now, now that I've said it, you're, you're gonna see it when I point out, or you're gonna be like, "Oh, you're crazy." But. Uh, you're not going to see that for a little bit, because uh, those weapons, unlike the other three I just mentioned, uh, do not spawn off of enemies. They are specifically on the map, like this item coming up here, which, according to what I read up, I think it's literally just called Mr. Invincibility, and this is all it does. It makes you invincible. You can take out guys in one hit. Also, I just got boomerangs by accident. Oh, well. <laughs> I didn't even notice. But the cool thing about boomerangs is... Um, when you throw them, they come back, and they don't count as losing them. And if you want to, like, say, uh, I don't want Donatello with these. We can just give them to Michelangelo. And this is kind of weird to do, but, um, and really lame. I always like giving Michelangelo the boomerang, so that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to give him, like, most of them, not all of them. But just so he has some, because Michelangelo will need these a lot more than Donatello will. But we can go back to Don. Let me show off these boomerangs anyway. But yeah, they do as much damage as as his bow staff, but um, you can throw them and they come back, and they can hit guys multiple times, which is really good. Um, I really love this game, <laughs> like a lot. Uh, this is one of my childhood games uh, that I grew up with, and I'm so happy to be doing a Let's Play of it now. Man, those guys hurt. So I have to do a whole, full block of damage. Wow, more boomerangs? Man, I'm actually getting really lucky with the item drops here because some of these sub-weapons refuse to drop. Uh, and they're the only things, by the way, that will drop off enemies is sub-weapons. They won't drop pizza or Mr. Invincibilities, which is kind of lame, but, I mean, that's just how it is. Alright, let's use Michelangelo with more boomerang action here. Now that I got him, I'm gonna abuse the heck out of him. And if you can, catch him. I mean, if you can't, then you don't, but if you can, catch him when you can. Then you get him back and you can use him more. Also, the enemies, there's like different sets of enemies, and they just seem to change once in a while. Like this fire guy, and the frog dude, and, and these like flying like bat things, like they, they're a set. And they weren't at the beginning of the stage, but they could have been. So you'll notice he's there. But yeah, sometimes they just change. It's, it's really weird. I don't know what determines it, but just sometimes it just happens. Alright, so we're going up to the first boss level here. We're about 10 minutes in, so this is actually pretty good. Uh, here's an example where Raphael is stronger than the other turtles. Uh, not Donatello. Donatello can take these guys out too, but Raphael can take these guys out in one hit. But Leonardo and um, Michelangelo can't. But I don't really understand. Sometimes, like, Raphael will not do 
full damage uh, to a lot of the enemies. So I don't know. It's like some enemies he hits harder. It's uh, like I'm maybe he hits like. You notice how all the blocks are down there for your health, right? Well, enemies have a similar health bar, too. Uh, you'll see it when you fight bosses, but you won't see it when, you, when you're when you just fighting them like this. Uh, so maybe he does, like, I don't know, like 66% of a block? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to actually fight the boss with Raphael, because uh, there's a really cheap method that everybody, most people know. You can use Donatello, you can chill on this block and just swing your uh, staff down and not get hit, but I'm going to actually try to legitimately fight Rocksteady here. Uh, he's not too bad. I mean, he'll jump and shoot his gun. Uh, he pretty much has the same pattern as Bebop, except that he jumps higher, and instead of punching, which, by the way, uh, Bebop just didn't do, uh, he shoots a gun, so... I mean, like, he's not hard at all. Like, even if you use Raphael, it's just... I don't know, he's getting kind of close now. <laughs> But like I said, he's not too difficult. These short hops, by the way, are really helpful. Uh, I'm gonna get hit. Oh, okay, I'm just taking it. I'm just tanking it. Like, I was at the end. I was like, go for it. <laughs> but we saved April O'Neil. I don't know if you saw the opening cutscene, but she was kidnapped by Shredder. Uh, but we saved April, so yeah. But apparently, the Foot Clan is going to uh, destroy the dam. So we gotta stop them from destroying the dam. And that was Area 1, by the way. There's six areas in this game, so we've already done one. Uh, they do get longer, although this one is actually the shortest one. Uh, but we're going to stop here, because this is a good start stopping point. We're about 12 minutes in. I want to keep this series going for a little bit. I want to just blow through it in one video. So thank you for watching. I've been Ownsback33. Next time we'll do Area 2, which is the dam. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the project. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.